All right, guys, welcome back. CFP here, and this is Survival Living. So we have episode two of our Solar Simplified. All right, our Solar 101. Now, there are many ways to do solar. There's my way, and then there's the correct way. What we're going to do in this, guys, is we're going to show you the correct way of doing solar. Now, in an emergency situation, shit has hit the fan. You might not have the ability to get all the necessary specialized equipment to make sure it is done absolutely by code. But I want to teach you how to do it by code so you know what is required, not how I've got my system set up. So we're tearing the whole system down and I'm showing you the correct way. So yeah, even I had to go buy some nifty little items that aren't cheap. Out here, we're out here at the workbench. We are going to make our battery terminal cables. We are going to show you how we run our batteries in parallel. Now, our batteries in parallel means we're taking a 12 volt battery and adding multiple 12 volt batteries. Now, with the 12 volt battery, guys, we are connecting all of our hots together and we're connecting all of our negatives together, all in a straight line. What this has done is created one large 12 volt battery. All right, our system, we run our little trailer here, it's all 12 volts, all right? We do have our inverter, which is a 12 volt inverter, that can transfer power into AC. But we have a lot of DC equipment. I chose DC lighting, DC equipment, because it's less draw on our system. Did you know that our DC lighting, which should be popping up there for you, uses half an amp? Half an amp! It's pretty freaking good very bright now back to the batteries there are ways you can make your batteries you can run them in series and make a 20 volt system if you've got 20 volt needs 24 volts my apologies you can make them into a 24 volt system we don't need 24 volts we have nothing that we're running that much power everything's 12 volts or is AC we're running 12 volts, okay? So hooking up all of our batteries to 12 volts in parallel, we made one giant 12 volt battery. With a 12 volt battery that size, what we have done was we multiplied our amp hours. One of our 12 volt batteries is 100 amp hours. Now, when you start running them all together in parallel, each new addition 100 amp hour battery, now you have 200 amp hours. 300 amp hours so on and so forth and there's still a 12 volt system now we're at the back of our trailer this is where we keep all of our solar equipment now we have our inverter we have our battery banks we have a charge controller here uh, we still got to hook up our EMP show that we picked up we got to put that in here and I'll show you all how to hook that up it'll go to our charge controllers now we are running dual charge controller guys this is just one we're gonna attach another one but as you see here it looks like a mess well, it is a mess. So what we're going to do is we're going to install this stuff correctly. One of the first things I want to discuss with y'all is this battery bank. Now, this battery bank was done on a budget, so there are some things that are done that should not be done. But, like I said, don't do like I do. <laughs> do as I say. Now, as you can see, there are different sized batteries here. All of these are 12 volts. They're all the same type of battery. They are the maintenance-free blood acid batteries. The issue is, there's a couple issues. These are 100 amp hour batteries over here on my left. These are the same amount of amp hours. These in the center are 35 watt amp hour batteries. There's two. These on the right, these are 75 watt amp hour batteries. See the problem? They're the same type of battery, but the amp hours are different for each one. And they are different brands of batteries. Now, I have made this one here, and it's been working just fine for a year, but I want to stress out the dangers of this. It is not, I repeat, not recommended to do this. It is recommended that you purchase your batteries all the exact same voltage, 12 volt these are all the exact same amp hour rating 
these are not these are 100s these are 35s these are 75s it is recommended that you purchase the exact same brand of batteries these are not these are a different brand that's a different brand and that's a different brand and it is recommended that you purchase all your batteries at the same time in other words these batteries are three years old two years old these here are four years old three years old I forget the date on it I have to look it up these here are refurbished batteries over here on the right so the system is not of code as if what they say you need to have does it work yes it does but I'm here to teach you the correct way of doing it as you can see what I'm doing we've been living off this thing for a year with no issues now the next up our battery terminals okay our, our jumper wires from each battery this is six gauge well we have some new wiring that we're going to be running today our new terminal for our batteries it's a welding wire all right the actual gauge is right here for you this is going to be our new battery terminal from each battery is going to be going with the sticker wire let me go ahead and pan up here. I'm going to show you something else. Our inverter. We are running 6 gauge. We are going to be running heavier duty wires off of our inverter to our batteries. Now for our charge controller guys. Our solar runs in. This is where we are hooking up our EMP shield to this one. And we're also going to hook it up to our other because we've got a dual charge controller EMP shield. Our battery bank goes to the next one. We have 10 gauge wire. 10 gauge is fine because this is only a 40 amp charge controller. Our 10 gauge wire is rated at 55 amps. So we have plenty of wire size for the output. And then the last is our discharge. That is also 10 gauge wire running to our panel box. But we'll be running a fuse panel between that two before it gets to our switches. Also down here, guys, we have our shunt. But our shunt, you see the mess? I've got wires tucked everywhere, coiled up. We're cleaning this up. We're getting precise cuts. Our wire size, everything done today. And then we're going to mount everything and make it all nice and pretty. That way none of this stuff is just laying here. That's a fire hazard. No, it's not. As long as your connectors are not touching each other and they're sealed, it's fine. But it looks like a mess. Now on our inverter, guys. See, we've got an extension cord plugged in here. And we also have an extension cord wired in to our outlet. Our hard, our hard line of our inverter. Now do not do this this is 14 gauge wire okay it's enough to hold the amperage coming out of this box but as an extension cord it is not code so what I have done is I have picked up the correct electrical wire this is 14 2 wire now this is running to let me pop this up here for you we ran some new plugs in our system there's new plugs those new plugs are going to be powered off of this right here now this is just a regular outlet there's two outlets in there this runs my bench grinder this runs all my electrical outside of the trailer I just plug in here turn it on and that's what we run this runs all of our tools we've run circular saws drills I run a bench grinder um, I've never had any issues this is a 3000 watt inverter it's got a 5,000 watt peak. I thought it was a 6,000, it was a 5,000 watt peak. I've never had any issues. This runs our air condition when we need our air condition. This runs our heater when we need our heater. And we can tie this in and run our refrigerator if we need to. This is a small refrigerator we run in this. But we usually run directly off our DC for our refrigerator. Now we have our 12 volt, 100 amp hour 10 hour batteries these are our main battery source our main storage source for our solar this is also going to be our main storage source for our wind turbines now 
we're going to show you how to hook these things up in parallel basically we are taking all of our 12 volt batteries they are all the same amp hours they're the same manufacturer they're the same voltage 12 volts 100 amp hours these are the same batteries and we're connecting them all together hot to hot all the way down the line and we're going to create one large 12 volt battery and depends on how many batteries we got hooked up right now i've got three right here on hand that i want to show you because it fits on the bench and we're going to create one big 300 amp hour battery bank all right so first up we need to make sure our batteries are all turned the correct way we got all of our hots on one side all of our positives and we got all of our negatives on the other side now we need to make battery terminals now for this guys we have our battery terminals here these are going to be connecting to our cables themselves and that's why just like this we'll hook them up and they will go all the way through the line so we were running six gauge wires here i apologize i've got really shitty parents across the street that just screams and haul up their kids instead of actually dealing with their kids so that's what you're hearing in the background that shit pisses me off all right guys so this is what we did have on our battery terminals going from terminal to terminal this is our new lugs see the difference this is our new cable big difference All right, guys, so we went ahead and pre-measured our length here, how we're going to run our battery cables. Just take your cable, get a good estimate, cut a little long if you want to. Um, you can use bolt cutters. I do recommend using bolt cutters, but I don't have bolt cutters handy, so we're using our grinder. Now we need multiple links for our junction. We're going to make sure that we leave enough cable for our actual clamp. So we're just going to make all of our cuts. Alright, now that we've got our cables cut, we need to measure out how deep these are going to go. Basically, just take your lug. Hold it up to your cable, kind of mark it with your finger. That's how much insulation you got to cut off. Now I just usually use just my pocket knife. You can get a fancy tool if you want to. Pocket knife works very well. And you're just cutting the insulation off. You'll feel it hit the uh, wire on the inside. So just trim around. And she should pop right off. Like that. There we go. And then we slide our lug over our battery cable in. Now we've got to crimp this. Now they do have a crimping tool which will pop up there on the screen for you. I don't have one. So, I've got a piece of steel. I've got a center punch. i got a hammer. <laughs> i got a rubber hammer. That's alright. So, I'm going to go ahead and set my terminal up right here. I am going to... Hit it with a center punch just to kind of sink it in place. So next we're going to take our center punch. We're going to hit our terminal just to pinch it down a little bit. And then we're actually going to take our center punch, lay it long ways. And this way, we will get a good bite. See the indentation? Now it holds a terminal. So we have finished our parallel system. This is the three 12 volt, 100 amp hour batteries. Each one was 100 amp hours. Now what we've created is one giant 12 volt, 300 amp hour battery. Now we've got positive going to positive, positive going to positive. This is for parallel systems, negative going to negative, negative going to negative. As you can see, I've got these loose so I can show you this. We've got our terminal here. It goes across and connects on this side of the lug of the battery and then we got our other wire connecting here vice versa and it keeps going on now the more batteries you have the more you'd build like i said we went with a heavier gauge wire compared to what we did have up here our little uh six gauge wire all right this is a heavier duty one now when i install this to an inverter guys 
I like to hook up an inverter on one side, positive and negative, on one side of the battery bank. On my other side of the battery bank over here, this is where I got my charge coming from my charge controller, my positive and my negative from the charge controller, and my inverter. That way it pulls the whole system. But basically if they're all the exact same amp hour batteries, like this one right here, your battery system will equalize itself out. So the drain and draw off the battery will be equal across the bank. But doing it this way, putting the inverter on one side and the charge control on the other side, that's up to you. It's just a practice I like to do. I don't have any proof that that's the best way. I don't have any proof that it's not the best way. It's just what we like to do. So let's go ahead and install this. And let's get the inverter and everything hooked up. All right, guys, so we've got our inverter. I had to hook up our ground cable again. A little green wire. We got an external ground on this inverter. This wire is driving me crazy. So we're gonna actually gonna wire this up and get it out of the way. This is going to our plugs on the inside. This is actually backwards. Let's switch that around. We got black. Blacks are hot. We got our ground, which is the bare wire, and our white wire is our neutral. And on this inverter, they're gonna go just like that. But to do this, I need to throw us some half hooks in here. Half circles, hooks, whatever it is you want to call it, as soon as I find my pliers. There they are. And I just pinch down on the end, bend it around, just like that. Alright. Pair of needle nose works best. I just got some wire dikes here. Now, these are what's going to go and hook up into our inverter, just like that, all right? Stand this up without trying to drop it, because that would suck. And you want your hooks to go the same direction your screw is turning. So in this case, it's going this way. And today we're using Snap-on Tools, brought to you by... No, this is a Harbor Freight screwdriver. Figured I'd joke around with you a little bit. It doesn't matter as long as it's the right screwdriver. Alright, so we got our neutral hooked up. Now we're going to put our ground on. That's our bare wire. And this is going to run our AC appliances. This is a hardwired in to our inverter. It's going to run our AC appliance. Our TV, DVD player, surround sound. Our coffee pots. Uh, so with our system guys, we don't have a very large elaborate system with solar. You can build a very large elaborate system if you like, but it's very expensive. We're on a budget, so on a budget solar system, what do we do? Can we run coffee, coffee pots? Absolutely. I've documented that, showed video of us running our coffee pots. We're also able to run our air condition. Now, with a limited system, meaning our battery banks and stuff like that, we have to budget out our power all right so obviously we can't run our tv i'm always we can run our tv and the coffee pot at the same time uh we can't run our coffee pot and our air condition at the same time we can run our coffee pot and floor fans at the same time we can run our air condition and our tv at the same time but our coffee pot is a power killer so is our air condition so we have to take turns on which one we're going to operate all at one time so basically all you got to do is amp out your system see how many amps you're going to be using an hour per appliance and build your system accordingly with this inverter when it gets to wattages and stuff like that you need a inverter that has enough watt supply this is a 3000 with a 5000 watt uh, kick all right so that's wired in now and it's enough for everything we need now I've got to hang these on these bolts that are loose. That's going to be fun. So pull this wire up out of the way. And we're going to attempt to hit this. All right. Three out of four. 
the other one pushed back all right guys so i do apologize again for the fan noise but my wife's got rabbits and we got to keep them nice and cool all right so we got our battery banks in here guys and you see there's a jumbo mess of wires all right let's simplify things down okay we got batteries coming in let's you know what let's go up top here we go all right so let's start at the very top guys we got these two wires right here red and black is our first two lugs right here in our charge controller that is 400 watts of solar power going into our charge controller. that's coming from the solar panel directly the next two sets of wires are these two sets right here red and black that is our battery bank that is leaving our charge controller and going to our battery banks the last set the two red and black this is our load this is our DC current Everything that we run off DC, we run our lights, we run our shunt meter, everything that runs off DC runs off this such, uh, set of wires right here. We'll do a video later about running a fuse block for these, but right now, very simple. So we got two. The exact same thing is going on here. We got our other set of panels coming into the first two lugs, red and black. Our battery bank is the next set of uh, lugs right here. This is our battery emblem right here. Red for positive, black for negative. And then we've got our load, our DC current load, which is right here. We're going to upgrade that wire on another video. Now, I wanted to combine our power going into our battery banks. So we're going to backtrack. Remember, we have the battery loads right here. These are our middle loads, our two right here in the middle red and black positive and negative positive and negative now I've got them routed but here I've done something different I put a distribution lug on both sides one for the negative one for the positive this charge controller up here runs a wire down this charge controller here runs a wire down both are positive going into a positive lead for our battery that lead there goes through our battery same back over here. We've got a negative terminal. We've got a wire here, which is our charge controller negative. And we've got a charge controller negative combining right here. And we're hooking up for our negative on our batteries. This is our negative going to our battery bank. Now you do see another lug up here. This lug here is going to our power shunt. That is a voltmeter so we can measure how much power we've got coming in and out of our solar system. We'll go over that on another video. That's not important right now. It's just an extra meter just to take a look at. Now, over here, guys, we've got a little green wire. I've still got a hook up. This is a grounding wire for our inverter. We've got a little red light here. It means that we've got a ground fault issue because we're not grounded. This is our negative terminal coming out of our power inverter. This goes directly to the battery, okay? We've got a hot. This is our positive coming out of our inverter that is going directly to our battery on our positive side, our negative side. This is going right to our batteries. Now, I've already showed you we wired up our AC current plug right here. And let's go back into the battery bank. Okay, guys, so we've got everything tied in over here on our negative side. This is our negative four, our inverter, this is our negative here for our power shunt so we can read our voltmeter and everything else. And that also works as our negative from our charge controller. It's all running right here. We got three lugs. And then we may get a jumper for our parallel system to the next battery and jump to the next battery. That's system sealed. Next up, we have our positive. All right, so we got our main lead right here. This is coming from our main power source from our charge controllers. It's running to our battery bank. From our battery bank, we got a jumper going to the next battery, jumper to the next battery, and then I've got a power for our inverter hooked up. So it kind of draws to the whole system. You don't have to do it that way. You can do it either way you want to. I like doing it that way. Now, I also have a little clamp right here, this little guy. This is the power supply for my shunt, my, my voltmeter up front. And I just hook it up to the positive side of the battery bank. Okay guys, so it is the end of the day, so we're not getting much charge right now because our panels are sitting directly on top of our roof. 
they sit flat. But this is just goes to show you this is the shunt I'm talking about. This is a digital meter for our shunt that we wired up. And we'll go over that in another video. Um, this just we can take a glance at it during the day and we can see how much current we have in our battery banks. You know, so we can kind of tell what we're using during the night. So just a close-up recap, guys. First two wires right here, these first two lugs. This is our solar coming from our solar panel. The next two lugs, number three and four, this is our battery bank. This is going to our battery bank. And then our last set of lugs, number four and five, I mean, I'm sorry, five and six, this is going to our DC current load. If we're running DC lighting, anything else, this is what we're using. If we were using AC, we'd be over here and using the inverter plugging in. We're like we got this wire plugged into us, we got hardwired in, and we also have outlets that we can plug in. And now our last install for our solar grid is our EMP shield, guys. So we're gonna have to hook this thing up to both of our charge controllers. So we've got our wires, they'll be tying into our solar grid section of our wires, okay? These are going into the solar part, the first lugs. All right, so we got a positive and a negative goes in here. Then a green wire goes to a ground. We harness it, we ground it down into the frame, kind of like what we are going to do with our inverter. So this is what we have to protect ourselves from EMPs and coronal mass ejection is our EMP shield. Yes, guys, we do uh, sell these. We are part of the affiliate program. You guys use CFP EMP, get $50 off each item that you get. So that's what we're going to be using on this. Now, we also have this type of equipment on our vehicles but we also have it for our solar. All right, guys, y'all take care. Speak to y'all later. Yeah, yeah, stack that mac and cheese, yeah.